burn. God, it's cold. Whew. Actually, I'm in Central Texas and it's not even November yet, so it's actually pushing 90 here today. But where you live, it might be starting to get cold. And even if it's not yet, it will be soon. And a lot of people get confused about what to do with their hot tub when it's super cold outside. It doesn't really get super cold where I live, but maybe it does where you are. So in this video, we're gonna cover all the ins and outs of what to do with your hot tub in the wintertime. Hi, I'm Jeff Campbell from Hot Tub Owner HQ, and I'm glad you're here with me today. So first of all, just know that in my opinion, you should never shut down your hot tub in wintertime, except for a few key things. Number one, are you going to be gone? In other words, maybe you have a winter home and a summer home and you're gonna leave one house to go to a different one in the winter time and you're gonna be gone for, let's say, at least a month. In that particular situation, you might wanna shut down your hot tub and winterize it and I'm gonna cover that a little bit later in the video. The other key consideration is if you live somewhere that is prone to frequent power outages and those outages last a long time, at least 24 hours or longer. In that situation, you might also also want to shut down and winterize your hot tub if the temperatures typically get below freezing when that happens. Otherwise, I am of the opinion that you should never shut down your hot tub. Why? Well, for starters, it's really nice to soak in warm water when it's chilly outside at nighttime, early morning, or even midday, as long as it's not super sunny like it is right now. That's a great time to soak in the hot tub when the temperatures are in the 40s, 50s, 30s. I've even gotten in this hot tub when it was snowing outside and below freezing, and it feels great. It's just a little chilly when you get back out again. But I am of the opinion that a hot tub is excellent in wintertime. So what do I mean by frequent power outages? Well, I actually did a test on my hot tub in the wintertime last year. You can look for that video on my channel. And what I did was I intentionally shut the power off overnight to see exactly how much the water temperature would actually drop when the weather got cold. Now, in my case, it wasn't below freezing, but it was in the 30s. I don't have it committed to complete memory, but I believe the amount that the water temperature dropped was only nine degrees. That's not nearly a big enough drop to do any damage to your hot tub whatsoever. So again, unless you're prone to frequent power outages when the weather is well below freezing and those outages last for at least 24 hours, I don't think that should be a consideration for you. The other consideration that I mentioned is if you have two homes and you're gonna be leaving your home for an extended period of time, I would say at least a month, then you probably do want to drain and winterize your hot tub. How do you do that? So first of all, you're gonna to wanna to drain your hot tub completely. I do have other videos that go into that I'll link to some of those down below in the description. You also want to use a wet dry vac to get all the remaining water off of the seats and other areas like that. You also want to suck out the water from each and every jet in your hot tub to get any excess water out of those lines. Then you probably want to remove your front panel here. And let me do that for you so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. But I like to open up the gaskets on either side of the heater. That way, any excess water that happens to be in the plumbing has a way to drain out because of expansion and contraction. And we all know that when things things heat up, they tend to expand, and when that gets cold, they tend to contract. And that expansion and contraction can be really bad for any trapped water in your plumbing lines. So opening up those union fittings allows the air and the water a place to go during natural expansion and contraction. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So chances are you've probably removed one of these front panels from your hot tub before. If you haven't, it's really super simple. You're basically just going to lift up and then kind of give it a gentle pull towards you. And then it'll slide to one side or the other, but it should just kind of drop down. If you need to, you can remove one of the corner pieces, but in most cases, since it's flexible, you can kind of just pull at the middle and set it aside like that. Now, I also have some added insulation on my hot tub, which you see here. And I did another video about how to do that and how much quieter it made my hot tub. I actually measured the decibels before and after. And if you're curious about that or you might want to do that to your hot tub because it's super loud, check out that video. I'll leave a link to that down below as well. But I am going to have to kind of remove this a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Luckily, it's just foam panels that I duct taped in place. 
So it should be fairly easy to kind of take these off of here. Now you see here, this is the control pack. This is the heating tube here. There are union fittings on either end of it. I'm not actually going to unscrew mine right now because otherwise all the hot tub water would come gushing out everywhere. But what I like to do, these attach two different ways. There's a Phillips head screw right there and right there. So you want to loosen those and then the two pieces kind of come apart like that. And then you can kind of unscrew from either end. There are gate valves right here, which you see. And if I wanted to, I could close those, although mine don't work super well. But if I closed those, it would prevent most of the water from the hot tub of getting in there and leaking water everywhere like that. But it's really pretty simple two screws and then it just kind of unscrews on either side of this. Just do that to allow excess water to drain out and so that air has a place to go during expansion and contraction. So the next consideration, once you've got the hot tub completely drained, obviously you cut the power before you drain the hot tub. So the power is totally off. You've used a wet dry vac to get all the excess water out. You've vacuumed out all the jets. You've opened the fittings down here below. Now the hot tub is pretty much ready to go. It's pretty much ready for you to go away for an extended period of time and even if the temperatures drop well below freezing your hot tub should be totally fine. The only other consideration is making sure that the cover is on the hot tub. And if you've got locks on there, sometimes they have little latches and you can lock your hot tub cover in place. I do recommend doing that. However, the only other consideration is that if you live somewhere that gets a lot of snow and ice, that can land on the hot tub cover. And without the heat of the hot tub from underneath the cover, there's no way for it to melt. If you get an excess of that, it can actually significantly weigh down the cover and potentially even buckle it or cause it to break, and that is not good. So if you're going away for an extended period of time, like we talked about, a month or more, and if you have a neighbor who lives nearby, it might be a good idea to pay them to come over maybe once a week and just kind of sweep off with a broom any excess snow or ice that has built up on there just to prevent that from happening because the weight of snow and ice can do a lot of damage to your hot tub's cover, to say nothing of just the damage that it can cause to the leather or the pleather itself. I do have have another video on how to maintain and keep your hot tub cover in good shape. It's really super simple, but I do recommend following those tips periodically throughout the year. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to that one down below as well. But I hope this helps answer the question for you of whether or not to shut your hot tub down and how to do that if you decide to do that. If you have a comment or a question, leave me that down below. I've got a million comments waiting and I'm going to do a future video very soon where I go through all of the questions that are pending on my channel and answer them one by one. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.